All right, y'all know I have to use my Contigo because my coffee will go cold within like three minutes in this house. But let's talk about something that I watched this morning, or should I say listen to this morning? And that was the Minimalist Podcast, which is a podcast I don't listen to as much as I used to. I used to really enjoy the Minimalist, and I still do, but there's so many other women minimalists that I feel like I can relate to even more. And I just feel like there's so many minimalists out now that are putting out amazing content that I just go back and forth to the minimalists on and off. So one of their latest podcasts was about restraint and it immediately got me hooked when I first started listening to it because the woman that asked the question to them, I felt like was me. Like she, she was talking about how, um, well, she led to a question, but she started talking about how she had decluttered her whole house and she had gotten rid of most of her things. Cause she just realized after watching their Netflix special, which I watched as well back in the day. And she realized that that's what she wanted. She realized that that was her problem. Always feeling overwhelmed in her house, always feeling sad in her house and stressed. So then she decluttered a bunch of stuff, but now she's still struggling with buying things online way too often, spending way too much money on it. And she's not sure how to overcome that last hurdle. And I will say probably having a problem buying things online was my last hurdle as well. And it's something that can creep up on, I think, all of us, even if we are the best at putting in all of the different kinds of restraints, like having to put in all our information or not having free shipping. If you have Amazon or Target, there are lots of restraints that we can put in place to make it harder for ourselves and help our brain to stop before we just buy things. But it doesn't mean that it's 100% perfect all the time. Like a magician who knows the magic tricks, the magic is sort of gone. Mm -hmm. And I used to run a bunch of retail stores, 150 retail stores. And I know about all of the tricks and marketing and doorbuster sales and how to get you in the door and what to do to steer you in a particular direction to get you divorced from more money from your checking account. So as Joshua is talking about his retail experience and how retail stores often put up all the signs and all the product out there and then put it on sale, like they're not going to have that sale the following week. Those are all things that I myself personally fell into the desperate need to buy things because they're on sale that week. Even if I went into the store and never even thought about that product before that very moment, you'd feel that like that pull, like, what if I miss out on something? And um, so then he started talking about Foot Locker, which made me laugh because I haven't thought about Foot Locker since I was probably like 20. Like, I haven't been in one. Growing up in the Midwest in the 1990s, you know what happened? I saw a lot of shoe stores and they all look like some variation of Foot Locker. And so Foot Locker is what a shoe store is supposed to look like. And it's not that they are hyper cluttered or hyper chaotic. It's just that they have a lot of boxes, a lot of clothes, a lot of signage, a lot of tags, a lot of stuff. You just feel this desperation, both from the company that's like trying to meet their quotas, trying to sell as much as possible so they can report it to Wall Street. And then also from the people that are in there constantly just searching for the next best sale like they're getting a deal so he's talking about you know Foot Locker and then he's comparing it to another store he had gone into the other day that was another shoe store where everything was just very curated and there weren't any boxes out and everything was just beautifully displayed and the feeling you get when those two things are compared so that reminds me of yesterday actually I went to a store called Home Goods which is just like a big home store for decor and everything you could possibly need for your house with my mom yesterday. And I've been looking for one very specific item, which is a marble kind of flat tray that I can put my coffee maker on because my coffee maker will spill occasionally because it's a super cheap coffee maker. And uh, we have wooden countertops. And so it's left, it's left a few stains. Now you can get the stains out, but it's just obnoxious. So my husband, And I both decided we want to find like a slab of marble that we don't want to spend a lot of money on, but that we won't mind if it gets some coffee on it. So I digress. So that's what I've been looking for. 
But when we walk into Home Goods, I haven't been in a Home Goods in probably a little over a year, and I was bombarded by things overwhelming amount of things. And I don't remember Home Goods always being like that. I don't know if this is a shift to try and sell more things, but my mom and I were looking down uh, different aisles. And I just remember looking, I looked at her and I was like, are, are you kidding me? Like how, how can anyone shop like this? It's just so much stuff. But then I pictured myself, you know, six or seven years ago and I would have been overjoyed. I would have been thinking, oh, the treasures are out. I'm going to go dig through all of this stuff to find exactly what I want, even though I don't know I want it yet. So I can just picture myself before being so excited about it. And now I'm just completely overwhelmed. It is so off-putting to be in a store that is so cluttered. Like if you've ever been in an Old Navy, a lot of times the Old Navies where I live are just insane. Like there's just clothes everywhere. They don't have enough staff to ever be able to put things back nicely the way they are supposed to be. So I don't even go in old navies anymore. It's just way too overwhelming for me. So anyway, I was thinking about that. And then I was thinking about what Joshua said. And it's so, and you know, like sometimes I feel like you hear the right things right at the right moment. And so I'm listening to what Joshua and his whole team are talking about and he is talking about restraint and how a lot of times like you'll go in a beautiful museum and you'll see that there's not a whole lot of artwork up. Like every wall might have two pieces, three pieces, but it's so beautifully displayed and how that makes you feel so much different than when you're going into like a home goods like I went into and you're just overwhelmed. Your senses are just frazzled by the amount of things that you see. And so that got me thinking about a conversation my mom and I had yesterday when we were in the Home Goods, and she had found this really cute badminton set. That um, badminton is like you have a, it's kind of like tennis, but you have a birdie. A tumble there as well. She found this really cute badminton set, except for that it was huge. It was like the the paddles were like this big, and um, they were obviously made like for kids to have a lot of fun. And I was actually picturing myself this whole time. I was like listening to her. I was like, oh my goodness, I should get this. This would be so much fun. I can just already picture myself enjoying this. Well, normally then I would have grabbed it. You know, normally before I would have just grabbed it and gone and bought it because I could picture myself enjoying it. But now that I have learned the power of restraint and I actually know that restraint is a good thing, not a bad. I started thinking about the pickleball set that I recently got rid of because we only played pickleball one time. And I was thinking about where am I going to put it? It's big. Where am I going to want to store it? What is going to have to happen to it when I'm done with it? What? Where am I going to donate it? And the energy it's going to take for me to donate it, is that worth it? Are we going to play with it that often? And that stopped me in my tracks. And so I'm thinking about this and I'm kind of daydreaming about, should I get it? No, blah, blah, blah. And all these things are going on in my head. And then I hear my mom start talking to me again. And she goes, well, really, Becky, you could just use a balloon in your hand. And instantly I remembered that that power of restraint that so often we over analyze and over buy things because we think it's going to solve a problem or we can imagine ourselves really enjoying things when really the simplest solution is usually the best solution. Having a balloon, which is easy to acquire, it doesn't really take up a lot of space, is going to have the same power as playing this game. They're very similar. And I was just like, wow, okay. Balloon on one hand takes up a lot less space than having to keep this thing this big badminton set and having to store it and keep track of it and make sure it doesn't break all of these other things. So restraining myself and going with the simplest solution is automatically going to be the easiest. So if you're enjoying learning about minimalism decluttering, then real quick hit that subscribe button because I have lots more videos and lots of ideas to share with you guys. But if you're on a decluttering journey also, and you're learning about living a simpler life, then put a heart emoji down below so that we know we're all in this together. But thinking about that badminton set, I would love to know if you've had a similar experience 
where you've stopped yourself, you started thinking about it, and then you realize that the solution was the easiest solution. It's either not buying it or it's using something you already have or getting a smaller version is gonna make your life so much easier. So when I think about restraint, often I get negative connotations. When I first started thinking about the word restraint, I think of negative things like going to jail or not being able to eat the last piece of cake that you want to. Being told no about things is what I associate with the word restraint. But I think what Joshua reminded me of is that the word restraint can also mean beautifully curated, like the museum I was talking about, or like when you do go into a store and the, there's not piles of things everywhere. It's restrained. They only put a few things out at a time and you can see the beauty in that. So it had me remember my own home as well. And I was thinking about how in my house, I have used so much restraint over the years and it's taken time. You know, this YouTube journey was not the beginning of my minimalist journey, but it was at a point where I started to realize the importance of minimalism. And so I wanted to start talking about it. But if you watch some of my older videos till now, you'll notice that a lot of the rooms in my house are different looking. And so I'll probably do another walkthrough of my house. But I think the beautiful thing is that once you learn the power of restraint, you see how you can use it in many different areas of your life. And so even thinking about the shelves that I'm currently looking at in my living room and how they started off where I went to Marshall's or TJ Maxx or something, and I just started buying like everything I could find that I thought went together so that I could fill these shelves behind me. And for a while before I became a minimalist and really started to declutter, I thought that's what you were supposed to do with flat surfaces was just to fill them with beautiful things put as much as you can on them and people will think that you've got it all together. But the power of restraint, the power of minimalism has really taught me that it's in the taking away of things that you actually find a lot of beauty. It's when there's less of something that you actually can see the individual pieces. It also had me thinking about my bedroom. And if you go into your bedroom and you're feeling very overwhelmed by the amount of things that you see in it and things don't have a home and you just don't even know where to start or how to start or why you should start because you feel so overwhelmed. The power of restraint is something that you can start using in that room. So if you have a lot of things up on the walls, then go through your room and take everything down and only slowly put back the things that are necessary or that you get a lot of happiness from, from looking at them. Have you ever looked at something and you feel a sense of joy when you look at it. A lot of people, when they have too many things, you don't even know how to identify that sense of joy that Marie Kondo likes to talk about. But there's a lot of things that I don't find any joy from, but they're necessary. But some things like the pieces of artwork that I have up now, they trigger memories or they trigger a response in my body that's like, wow, yeah, I really like that. It makes me happy when I look at it and I feel calm or I feel at peace. So if you're not feeling that when you're looking at things, then just quickly declutter them and stop overanalyzing whether you should use it later on or maybe once you declutter it, you'll like it better. The only way you're going to find the things that you actually like are by decluttering a ton of other things. And then you might look back occasionally and say, wow, I wish I still had that. But I guarantee 99% of the time you won't. There is not one piece of decor that I can actually think of sitting here that I miss, that I would want back. Nothing, no piece of decor. And it's only in the decluttering of so much mess that I actually have realized that. So if you're feeling really insecure about getting rid of stuff, just know that by the next day, even by the next hour of getting rid of it, you won't be thinking about it again, that you'll just feel a sense of relief by going into a room that is restrained and curated. So if you do start thinking about your house as a store, what kind of store do you want to be? Do you want to be the home goods that's overwhelming and stuffed and people walk in and feel anxious? Or do you want to have your home be the store where people feel really relaxed? I remember just going into Nordstrom's, which Nordstrom's was not always the most relaxing place to be in, but they did have this section back when we used to have one where 
It was like in the bathroom, there was a separate room that had a lounge area with a chair and some tables. You could do your makeup in there. And I remember always walking into that particular bathroom because it was so well curated. It was so relaxed. You could have a place where you could sit down and um, feed your baby or have a time out from being at the mall. And that was the best part of the whole Nordstrom's. Did I ever buy anything at Nordstrom's? No, but did I use their bathroom? 100% and I miss that it's not there anymore because it wasn't so overwhelming. It was a place to take a breath. So you really want your home to be the store, to be the place where you can take a breath and you can relax and you don't have to worry about inviting people over because you have so many things and feeling like you need to apologize to people, which you don't anyway. You don't need to apologize to anyone for your lifestyle, but I want you to feel more comfortable when you're walking around your house. I want you to feel more comfortable inviting people over because people are there because they love you. It's, it's not because of anything that you have or you don't have that people are coming over to your house. So the power of restraint is being able to say no to things so that you can say yes to living in a more peaceful and welcoming home. All right, friends, I hope you've enjoyed this little coffee chat with me today. And if you have, remember to subscribe and come along on my minimalist journey with me. All right, I'll see you guys soon.